Hello dear students and now after understanding singly reinforced beams and uh, doubly reinforced beams in which we have only considered those reinforced concrete beams which have a rectangular cross section. Now we are going to discuss a different type of beam which is very very important and it is in every parts of the structure that is the flanged beams. So basically we are going to understand only the analysis part of flanged beams. Design is of course it will be complex. So we will be limiting ourselves to the analysis only. And uh, this is the figure of a plan of a roof with three beams it's shown to you. Now this is the plan means the top view of a roof or the terrace or the slab which is shown to you and the bold lines represents the continuous boundaries okay and there are few dotted lines you see these dotted lines straight lines okay so this dotted lines represents the hidden uh, boundaries of the beams so i denote this beam as beam 1 okay and this as beam 2 and this as beam 3 now these three beams are holding slab 1 over 1 and 2 and slab 2 over beam 2 and 3. Now what are slabs? What are the types of slab? How they are analyzed and designed? That we will discuss after understanding few more topics. But currently we will try to understand the flanged beam only. Now what I have shown you in the next figure is the cross section of this plan. Okay. So I have uh, done here the kink marking. Okay. Kink means the roof slab is continuous here. And you know the concrete construction is a monolithic construction. Monolithic means everything is uh, joined or casted in the same shuttering and the same reinforcement bar runs throughout the members. Such a type of construction is called monolithic constructions and in those constructions joints formation is rigid joint. If this is the beam at the edge, okay, beam number 1 and this is the beam number 2 in the middle and this is the beam number 3 again on the edge. Now we know that there is monolithic construction. So in the strength of beam there will be some contribution from the slab also so we have taken this much length bf length of contribution from the slab and this has made our beam as l beam okay and what is this length bf how it is taken what are the specification and recommendation given as per the is code that we will also discuss so this is our corner or edge beam so this corner or edge beam will be also called as L beam okay so all the beams at the corners or the edge will be a L shaped beam all right now what about the beams in the interior so there will be contribution in the strength of the beam from the slabs from both of the side of the beam so here we have taken length b of the slab from both of the side equally beside the beam okay and bw this bw is the width of the intermediate beams so this intermediate beam has got a shape like t beam so all the interior beams comes under the category of t shaped beams so these type of beams which have a l shape or T shape comes under the category of flanged beams. Now the question may come that why T beams and L beams are called as flanged beams? Because in structures when there is a horizontal element like uh, this and this horizontal element is connected with a vertical element like this which is again connected with a horizontal member like this this is the flange at the top 
and this horizontal member is the flange at bottom now these horizontal members are called the flanges okay and this vertical member which is connecting both the flanges at top and bottom is called as bev all right so these two terms must be clear to you what is bev and what is flange and the same thing we have shown here that bev is the vertical element in the l beam as well as on the t beam and flanges are the horizontal members okay so the same thing is written here that beams when casted monolithically with the slabs then flange beams come into the structure so in any structure or the multi story building uh, there are uh, t beams and the l shaped beams almost in the every rooms uh, terrace or the slabs okay now the question still remains that how much length of flange do we have to take from the slab okay because not the entire length of slab will contribute to the strength of the flanged beam this is not going to happen so how much length do i have to take for the flanges on on the either side of the beams so if we measure the actual flange width taking the entire contribution from the slab either from the one side if it is a corner or edge beam or from the both side if it is a intermediate beam or a t shaped beam and this one is written for the intermediate beam and here we have written the actual flanged width b is equal to l1 by 2 plus bw plus l2 by 2 now we know that bw is the width of beams now what is l1 and l2 so l1 and l2 you can see in this figure of plan so we can say that l1 and l2 are the center to center distance between consecutive beams in the continuous slabs so here also we have written bw is the width of beam in bev portion okay so this is the diagram of intermediate beam being shown here now this is the width of flange this is still a matter of discussion what is the width of flange okay now we have isolated this t beam from the continuous slab structure and here we have drawn its cross section and if you see the dimensions we have taken capital d as the gross depth okay and we have provided a clear cover at the bottom and this is a example of singly reinforced beam and we are not going to study here doubly reinforced beam okay so the effective depth will be small d and this capital df df is the depth of flange section now what is this value of df it is basically equal to the depth of slabs now slabs are the roof or the terrace mid over those beams okay it says in design or analysis of any type either it is l type or t type we don't take actual width of flanges okay so here we are not going to take actual width of flanges which we have calculated b is equal to l1 by 2 plus l2 by 2 plus bw this value of b is the actual width of flange now in any of the analysis or design problem we never use this formula okay so instead we take effective width bf of flanged beam okay now calculation of this effective width is very very important to proceed in the analysis of such flanged beams now why we do not take this actual width of flange and we only take the effective width of flange and this is very clearly written here that the flange action in the slab due to the beam is only limited to certain extent so the flange action which is coming from the slab to the beam is limited to certain extent so for example we take this body as the beam in the bev okay now this body which is compared with the beam in the bev will also get contribution of strengths 
from the flanges and flanges are the hands in this uh, case although you may not be seeing both the hands so the strength coming from these two hands which are the flanged portion is limited we cannot go on extending our hand so much so that there is almost nil contribution in strength so that's why because of limited flange action we take only the effective width of flange not the actual width of flange so in most of the cases effective width of flange is less than actual width of flange and sometimes it can happen that effective width of flange may be equal to the actual width of flange now there can be two types of flanged beams the first category is the isolated flanged beams and second category is the continuous flanged beam now we are going to see what are the formulas for calculation of effective width given in the is code for these type of isolated flanged beams and continuous flanged beams so isolated flanged beams uh, we must have seen at the bus stop if we look at the bus stop structure it has a wall and over the wall is a roof and roof is on the both side and both the roof slabs are supported with by a single beam okay so such a beam has got a t type of shape and which is isolated entirely okay so it can be a l shaped beam also or it can be a t shaped beam which is isolated completely okay so in case of isolated beams uh, if it is a t beam the formula of bf is uh, written here as l not by l not by b plus 4 plus bw okay whereas in case of l beams the formula is slightly changed here by a factor of half okay 0.5 l not rest everything is same here now you need not to remember these formulas because these are already given in the is code i will be showing you also at the end of video now here l not refers to the distance between two points of zero moments in the beams so in continuous beams specifically there are points where there is bending moment equal to zero and such points of zero moments are called as points of contraflexor why it is said as the point of contraflexor because the curvature of the member changes here Uh, in the left of point of contraflexor there is negative bending moment or hogging is there whereas on the right of the point of contraflexor there is positive bending moment or the sagging so there is change in curvature now it is given that for continuous beams l not will be equal to 0.7 times the effective span okay so it is very easy we just have to equate l not is equal to 0.7 times effective span effective span is the distance between two continuous supports of a beam now here bf represents the effective width of flange and bw represents the width of the beam in the bep portion okay and capital df represents thickness of flange small b represents actual width of flange which is equal to bw plus l1 by 2 plus l2 by 2 okay so this actual width of flange you can calculate by this simple formula okay and when you know all these values you can put in these simple formula to get the effective width of flange now let us come to the continuous beams so continuous beams are everywhere in any of the multi story buildings house offices or colleges there are mostly continuous beams only and this formula is more important for our most of the practical cases now the notations are going to be same in this case also l not will be again the distance between point of contraflexor on a beam 
and it will be equal to 0.7 times effective span and bw will be the width of the beam in the web portion okay and capital df will be the depth of flange so this formula of calculating effective width bf in case of t beams and l beams is also given in the is code when they are continuous beam here continuous beams means there is one t beam here again there is one t beam t beam t beam and t beam like this there are so many continuous t beams now among all these t beams there are two l beams at the edges which is the boundary of the slab okay and on those edges there is one l beam here at the end and there is one beam here at the end and in the interiors there are all continuous t beams so in those cases we have to use this formula so in case of t beams bf is equal to l0 by 6 plus bw plus 6 times tf and in case of l beams bf is equal to l0 by 12 plus bw plus 3 times df i think this is the numerical for you all and here you have to calculate the effective width of this isolated type of t beam okay so you can do this at your home most of the dimensions are given here now here what i have opened is the is 456 2000 and i have opened the section 23 23.1 it the title is t beams and l beams so it is written here the slab shall be cast integrally with the web and the slab shall be effectively bonded together in any other manner so such a type of construction is monolithic construction then comes the effective width of flange here you can see in this title okay now it says in the absence of more accurate determination the effective width of flange may be taken as the following but in no case greater than breadth of the web plus half of the sum of the clear distances to the adjacent beams now what is this clear distances to the adjacent beams this means l1 and l2 okay now it says that effective width of beam bf should not exceed okay it should be less than uh, the sum of the width of beam in the web which is bw plus half of the sum of the clear distances to the adjacent beam which is equal to l1 plus l2 divided by 2 okay so this we have already discussed in the notes and here the equation for calculation of effective width in case of continuous t beam is given you can see this formula okay and here the equations for calculation of effective width bf in case of l beam in the continuous beam is given now in the point c if you see it says for the isolated beams the effective flange width shall be obtained as below and in this case of t beam which is isolated bf is equal to l0 by l0 by b plus 4 plus bw okay and in case of isolated l beam bf is equal to half l0 divided by l0 by b plus 4 plus bw and all these formulas and notations have been discussed in the notes so you can learn how to calculate the effective width first of all in case of flanged beams and then we will proceed how to analyze these types of flanged beams so we will be discussing more on this topic in the upcoming videos also so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you